Welcome to Zoom In, Zoom Out, where we take an in-depth look at how news from around the world is impacting Taiwan. I'm James Chater. Since Russia invaded Ukraine last year, many comparisons have been drawn with a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan. One area stoking particular concern is that Beijing could draw lessons from Moscow's threats to use nuclear force. Today, we're asking what China's rapidly expanding nuclear arsenal could mean in a potential conflict over Taiwan. To discuss this, we're joined by Tong Zhao in New Jersey. Tong is a senior fellow of the Nuclear Policy Program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Tong, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tong, before we begin, I want to start with some of the key figures on China's nuclear arsenal. For decades, China's number of nuclear warheads held steady at around 200, but in recent years, it's grown rapidly. The Federation of American Scientists now estimates Beijing has at least 410 nuclear warheads. A Pentagon report last year said that China will have 1,500 warheads by 2035 if its arsenal keeps expanding at its current rate. China is also starting a new nuclear reactor in Changbiao, just over 200 kilometers from Taiwan. Beijing now has at least three missile silos located deep within the country's territory. And from those, intercontinental ballistic missiles could strike anywhere on U.S. territory. Tong, China has described talk of its nuclear buildup as speculation. What is the official Chinese position on its nuclear arsenal? Well, the official narrative is you know, China has been modernizing its nuclear arsenal uh, for, for decades uh, according to its national security needs. Uh, it denies that China is uh, expanding uh, its nuclear arsenal or is involving in any type of uh, nuclear arms race. When Chinese officials were questioned about reported ICBM uh, build-up, uh, at least one of the senior officials said that China was that China wants to make sure its nuclear arsenal uh, will not um, have incidents. Uh, in peacetime, uh, and there is no uh, threat uh, from uh, sabotage uh, uh, against the nuclear arsenal. Um, so that's an interesting answer that doesn't really address why China needs to build so many more weapons in order to keep the weapons safe and secure. And just very quickly on, on the arsenal itself, as you mentioned, China's never confirmed this buildup. So how do we know exactly that it is taking place? Well, that's basically according to international uh, scholars uh, who use uh, open source information, including commercially available satellite imagery. And that sh clearly shows that China has been building uh, at least three large sites for ICBM silos. They have been following the progress of the construction on the ground. So, so there is very high confidence. And you mentioned there that China has a policy of, of no first use with its nuclear arsenal. But is what's happening um, with this new imagery and, and what we're learning about the expanding nuclear arsenal upending kind of confidence that China would, would maintain that policy? If, if China's policy is uh, it will only uh, retaliate uh, after uh, being struck first with nuclear weapons, then uh, those new ICBMs uh, don't really uh, undercut uh, China's no first use policy. Of course, the uh, nuance uh, is in the details, right? The, the, what is, you know, the devil is in the details. Uh, because China, China could potentially decide to launch a, new, a retaliation using those ICBMs before an enemy nuclear attack actually uh, exploded, actually detonated over uh, Chinese territory. Because China, by that time, would have high confidence of an incoming uh, nuclear attack. And why do you believe that China is building up its arsenal? What's changing in the international situation that's um, pushing the Chinese leadership to take these types of decisions, do you think? Well, we don't really know. And we can only speculate because uh, China doesn't offer any authoritative explanation about the military rationale behind the build-up. Uh, especially China is known uh, for worrying about the impact of American homeland missile defense. Uh, the concern is uh, if the U.S. launches a comprehensive disarming first strike 
against China, that could destroy the majority of Chinese nuclear weapons, of Chinese nuclear weapons, so that would undercut a nuclear deterrent. But I, I think those technical level concerns are certainly true, but they probably wouldn't fully explain the current round of Chinese nuclear buildup. Uh, because on the American hand, you don't see any sudden or substantial increase of uh, American nuclear capabilities or American homeland missile defense capabilities. I tend to believe that uh, political level consideration is more important, uh, especially the current Chinese paramount leader seems to have a strong belief in the geopolitical value of nuclear weapons. And if China can demonstrate a stronger a strategic capability including nuclear weapons that would somehow have a psychological impact on the mindset on the mindset of American leaders and make uh, US uh, behave more carefully when when dealing with China and you mentioned that the, the US force, of course, at the recent G7 uh, summit, a lot of the leaders were criticizing China's rapidly expanding arsenal. But isn't it, isn't it true that the US has far, and Russia, of course, has far more nuclear warheads than China does? And wouldn't the situation um, be eased if Washington was also taking steps, more drastic steps, perhaps, to reduce its own nuclear arsenal? It's absolutely uh, right that uh, U.S. and Russia are still the two main uh, nuclear powers uh, in the world. They each uh, possess about 2,000 uh, strategically deployed nuclear weapons today. Um, and uh, they also uh, each uh, have about uh, 2,000 more uh, nuclear weapons in reserve. That said, I think what causes international concern is the trajectory of their uh, development. Uh, since the end of the Cold War, U.S. and Russia have been uh, reducing their nuclear arsenals uh, very substantially uh, through a number of bilateral uh, nuclear arms control agreements. Um, and their numbers have uh, reduced from tens of thousands of weapons each to you know a little more than uh, you know to about two thousand today, whereas China is uh, on a, on the opposite trajectory of building up uh, its its nuclear arsenal. So that's why um, both U.S. and Russia uh, are saying that they need China to join uh, a, a, a trilateral or multilateral nuclear arms control process before they feel um, safe to, to uh, continue their bilateral process, um, especially if China indeed is aiming to build more than 1,000 nuclear weapons. And thank you for, for mentioning that on the, on the Russia policy perspective. Now I want to zoom out and take a look at what impact Russia's threats to use nuclear force are having on the global picture. In a recent interview with the BBC, Russia's ambassador to the UK, responding to a question about how long the war could continue for, said this. That depends on the efforts and escalation of war that is being undertaken by NATO countries. Sooner or later, this escalation may get a new dimension, which we do not need and we do not want. Tong, um, in May, Russia announced that it was going to move ahead with the deployment of tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. What lessons do you think Beijing could be learning from the strategy that Moscow has been taking um, in the conflict in Ukraine, especially as it, as it relates to nuclear weapons? Russia didn't explicitly and you know, directly threaten Ukraine with nuclear weapons per se, but that vague uh, reference to nuclear weapons by many Russian senior officials created a de facto a nuclear threat. Um, and that uh, has indeed uh, slowed down Western countries' military support to Ukraine, making them more careful and more reluctant to provide uh, you know, more powerful uh, military equipment. Um, so for many Chinese experts, they think uh, it has been working for Russia. Uh, the more important factor is you know, China genuinely um, uh, takes a very sympathetic uh, uh, perspective about Russia's cause uh, in this war. And similarly, China feels you know, completely justified in China's cause uh, to try to unify uh, Taiwan. So when that happens, uh, Chinese officials may also feel um, necessary. China would have 
the right uh, to use uh, uh, nuclear signaling uh, to deter uh, uh, U.S. Or, or other international uh, military intervention. So we spoke before when I um, was in Hiroshima for the G7, and you mentioned that um, the U.S. and China are both in a situation now where they think it would be the other that would resort to the threat of nuclear force first in a potential conflict over Taiwan. Can you explain why you think they've arrived at that situation? Yes, the uh, U.S. is looking at uh, Chinese nuclear buildup and diversification of Chinese nuclear arsenal that can uh, very ac accurately strike regional military targets. So that makes the U.S. worry that China is increasingly interested in uh, using or threatening the use of uh, nuclear weapons against the regional targets in a future regional conflict. Um, but China worried that it's the U.S. that might threaten nuclear escalation first because the U.S. is losing its conventional military superiority in this theater. And when you look at the situation today, whether it's with Russia and its threats of um, nuclear force in Ukraine and also with the situation in China, what is it that most concerns you about the direction that this is all moving in? Is it, for example, the lack of communication between the U.S. and China? Is it the lack of transparency over China's nuclear buildup? Well, the current run of Chinese nuclear buildup is closely uh, associated with the growing Chinese perception about a more hostile American uh, intention towards China. Um, you know, Chinese leaders, experts, elites, and the general public, they are fully convinced that China is now facing a more strategically hostile United States. It's that perception that is driving China to invest so much into strategic military capabilities, including nuclear weapons. And that relates to the growing and very serious information gap and perception gap between China and the rest of the world, especially the Western countries. We need to address that political level problem uh, before we can convince China about the necessity to discuss nuclear weapon issues. If China maintains its current very severe threat perception, there is no way that China would become interested in anything that would constrain its nuclear development or even to engage in a risk reduction discussions. Just one final question before we finish up. There was discuss discussion recently about Taiwan potentially joining um, the US security umbrella. Um, the foreign minister said that any, dis any such discussions wouldn't be made public. Do you think that's at all likely? And how would that change the calculus um, in a potential conflict over Taiwan, do you think? I think it reflects an increasing uh, concern on Taiwan's part about uh, uh, the risk of nuclear escalation in a future military conflict. Um, I don't think the U.S. is going to uh, explicitly or implicitly offer Taiwan the nuclear umbrella um, um, because it would you know, have very serious political consequences for U.S.-China relationship. China is very likely to interpret any American move to uh, provide a nuclear security guarantee to Taiwan as some type of American pro-independence policy. Uh, so for that reason, I don't think it, it is realistic for Washington to take that uh, step. Uh, but there are certainly uh, measures that relevant parties can take to reduce the risk of nuclear escalation in the future. Tong, thank you so much for your time today. It's really appreciated. It was a really great conversation. And thank you to our viewers too for joining us. This has been Zoom In, Zoom Out. You can find Taiwan Plus on Twitter and Facebook. We'll see you next time.